VChain update. Let's get into it. So today, guys, we're going to be taking another cheeky look at VeChain and specifically the price action of the VET token. As we get into this video, guys, if you do find it useful and informative, hit that like button. We both really do appreciate it. And of course, if you happen to be new to the channel and you'd like to stay up to date with all those new cryptocurrencies, the hidden gems, the technical analysis and news, then do go ahead and subscribe. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything we do here. It is free. You'll stay well informed. So why not? And Chris, obviously this is your biggest bag, but is there anything else that you'd like to add before we jump on down and start talking about everything VeChain? Just that the fundamentals for this project are just so strong. Um, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below whether you're phased by by the current um, price situation and the, the situation with the crypto space. Because on this particular project, not phased at all. Fantastic. Right, let's jump on down and get right on into it. Let's do it. Okay, guys, let's start with the generalized fear and greed index. Um, so again, guys, this is a, an extreme fearful situation. Uh, it was 13 yesterday, it's 14 today. Um, so again, just be fearful. That's generally the takeaway from this, right? Um, of course, this is just generalized across uh, all cryptocurrencies. Uh, and again, just to recap uh, the history here, we can obviously see that it was actually you know quite highly rated here in that kind of greed area before getting pulled all the way down into this lower band here. So right now being at 14, you can see how this thing has fluctuated um, you know, quite a bit over the last kind of a uh, couple of weeks or so. Now, if we scroll on down, extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried. Um, and of course that can be a buying opportunity depending on where you are in the cycle. Uh, and when investors are too greedy, generally means that there's gonna be a correction due. Um, so now we have a good understanding as to you know what to do under these extreme fearful, fearful situations and those greedy situations. Um, so you can take a look at uh, VeChain specifically. So we'll jump over to the Evise dashboard. We'll just uh, scroll on down here, just past the trading view and get into the fear and greed index. So here we obviously have uh, Evise uh, rating of a D. Okay, so uh, again, extreme fear. So um, even the artificial intelligence with Evise is saying that actually even VeChain has succumbed to a fair amount of fear. Um, okay, so it was actually performing quite well in certain pockets and obviously has been pulled down recently. So uh, yeah, this particular cryptocurrency of a VET, uh, the VET token has also got an extreme fearful situation uh, as is derived from the artificial intelligence. Uh, so an interesting kind of concept to know that uh, VeChain is also in line with that generalized fear and greed index. Of course, with EVI, we do get a little bit more uh, information here. We can see that the liquidity is actually a C2 rating, um, so it could be better. We also have the sharp ratio, so the risk to those rewards is actually rated as a grade D as well, bit of a problem there. Um, but of course, if we take a look at that profitability, it's actually the highest it can be at A1. So um, from a profitability point of view, although it's come down recently, um, the profitability for VeChain is fantastic. Um, so we just have to kind of work our way through that fear in the space, the liquidity in the space, and obviously those risk to rewards at the moment. Um, generally speaking, this has a C1 rating, and we can just jump on over to the cryptocurrency assets here. Um, let's just show all of these, and uh, we can just shoot down to VeChain. It was a C1 rating yesterday, and it's also a C1 rating today, so there's absolutely no change there. Okay, so it's good to understand where VeChain currently sits in inside the entire ecosystem. Um, and we do know that there are a couple of problems that need to be addressed when it comes to VeChain. Now, obviously, when we take a think about where we are in the cycle, it's always good to have a look at Bitcoin's dominance. Uh, we can obviously see what happened in the previous bull run, which is 2017, 2018. Bitcoin did fall down to about 37% uh, before slowly riding all the way up towards 67. Right now, we can obviously see that we came down to 39%, so a couple of percentage points difference. Um, we have gone back up, but had a retracement immediately pulling Bitcoin's dominance back down. Now, this is a sign that those to those institutions or those people who are manipulating the space and um, that retail money is still here and it hasn't been fully shaken out. So I do expect, uh, you know, something like we've seen with Bitcoin's um, recent pullback with all that shorting activity is basically uh, manipulating the situation to, to shake out some more retail investors. Now, ultimately, what's currently happening here is more like what happened over in this section just here. So I imagine that we're probably only going to spike up towards this 50% level here. This is my expectation. And before things go parabolic at some point, 
um, during the rest of this year. And altcoins obviously pulling Bitcoin dominance down towards that 30% level. Uh, so again, things are looking like they're heating up a little bit here, um, but I still am expecting Bitcoin dominance to increase um, in order to replicate what was happening previously in these previous bull runs. Um, so yeah, we're looking to increase this uh, Bitcoin dominance a little bit. Um, and then obviously we'll, once that happens, once we get this to a right level, um, the altcoins should decouple, go parabolic, uh, which is what happened here, and pulling Bitcoin's dominance down towards those lower levels. Um, so again, what we're looking for is for that moment for Bitcoin to rise up a little bit, for that decoupling to happen. The altcoins go parabolic, so altcoins go up, Bitcoin dominance goes down towards 30%. Okay, so that's the expectation. Now, what we're going to look at is obviously the stock to flow model with where we are currently. And here again, we have the 2013, 2014 model. We have the 2017 to 2018 area. And then obviously where we are in 2021, um, we haven't actually had that spike above the line yet. So the peak of the bull run does not appear to have actually come in yet. So we're definitely not going bare. But what you end up with here is that kind of narrative, that FUD that's being put out there that basically puts all that, a lot, a lot of that fear into the space and allows those retail investors to be shaken out of their cryptocurrency. So right now, what you can see is right here, uh, within this particular moment in time uh, is uh, in 2017, uh, sorry, 2013, we can see a quite severe drop in Bitcoin's price before it went parabolic and uh, really took out that next price target. Now, obviously, when it has that high above this high here, we obviously then go into the bear market, okay? And what happened in 2017 is, again, a correction back in July. Um, it went up to set another all-time high before another correction, and then it peaked out above this blue line up here, um, towards the end of 2017. Okay, then you go into the bear market. So where are we within our current cycle? Well, we had one uh, initial uh, surge to the upside, a pullback. We're going had another surge to the upside and then a very, very strong pullback. Um, and then again, um, we either have one or two all-time highs that still to come here. Uh, and our expectations are to peak above this blue line uh, as according to the stock to flow model. History does tend to repeat itself. Um, so, uh, you know, my expectations are that this does happen. Of course, there is always the, uh, the, the ability um, for the market to do something totally different, right? Something that we haven't seen before uh, in the history. Um, but history does usually repeat itself, of course. So um, my expectations are that it does this. Uh, of course, we have to be open to the op uh, the uh, the we have to be open to the understanding that this may not happen, um, as we are in a market that's relatively new, um, and of course could potentially have something different happen here. But ultimately, looking at the history, my expectations are that history will repeat itself, um, but I am open to the idea that it might not, um, as anything could happen in the, in the crypto space. But right now, my expectations are that we will be going after that 100k plus um, scenario for Bitcoin. Now, of course, what does this mean? Well, all this kind of ties together into what VeChain is doing because VeChain is still following as many of those altcoins are following Bitcoin. So it's always important that we have an understanding as to what's going on in that bigger picture. Um, so here we have a zoomed out version of VeChain against the USDT. This is the daily chart and we are using Binance as that data source. Now here we obviously have that zoomed out picture. We have the five wave scenario. We have wave one starting in the March crash of 2020, peaking up here um, in, I think it was August of 2020 as well. I think a lot of people could be familiar with those fantastic highs. We had the correction of wave two, which was kind of bottoming out in November, triggering into wave three for VeChain here, which peaked out in April, getting pulled down, which is where we are now um, in May, June. Now, the question that we have here is, even though we have actually raised the price quite significantly, is there a lower low possible? There are a couple of possibilities here, but I don't think they are likely to actually come to fruition. Ultimately, this wave four is actually a little bit higher than expected in terms of the percentage drop. Um, so my expectations here are that we will not drop any lower. And this is because wave four is usually only 40% of wave three. And in this particular case, wave four is actually slightly extended above that. So it's unlikely, in my opinion, that we are likely to drop wave four any lower than it currently has dropped to. So therefore, we kind of have had a bottom in for VeChain, in my opinion, and we could start to see a bit of a recovery here as VeChain eventually starts to move up the charts. Now, obviously, it's going to take a while. It's going to be quite volatile and we're going to see swings. But uh, I think the outcome and the longer term picture here is that VeChain has a target of over a dollar. OK, um, and I think this is something that we should be pretty comfortable with seeing. Um, and again, 
a lot of people who say the market cap doesn't allow for that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I think they need to really understand what market cap is and to understand how price discovery actually works. Because at the moment, um, I am seeing technically in this data a dollar being a pretty much comfortable achievement for VeChain. It could, of course, even go above and beyond that, depending on what happens fundamentally with VeChain and all the fantastic stuff that's going on in the space. So the technicals are only looking at what has happened uh, and what is current, uh, whereas anything that's new and any new fundamentals, new partnerships, new uh, technology for VeChain could really help push things further forward as well. So right now, from a technical point of view, things are looking pretty good from that bigger macro piece. Now, what we can do is we can zoom in here when it comes to VeChain, just expand this up a little bit um, so we get a bigger, clearer picture as to how things have actually been performing. Right now, we've actually pulled back yesterday towards our 236 area here. This is the 9.8 cent area, and we bounced right from there, and we have been performing quite well since. We obviously have a lower band here, a good support line at 9.2. Uh, so we haven't had to drop down that low yet. And obviously we have that resistance line at 13.2. Okay, there's also the upper resistance at 15.2. So ultimately, um, as I said quite a few times now, I imagine that we're going to be trading between these areas here, right? So between our 9.2 and our 13.2 cent areas, um, which is probably where we're going to consolidate for a couple of weeks or so, just sideways trading before we actually have a good attempt at moving into this yellow box area here. And I'll just expand this out a tad. So this particular area, this yellow box, is absolutely vital for us to, um, to get all the way through. Let me just move this back up. So, um, so ultimately, yeah, this yellow box here is the area of the 618, the 702, and the 786. What we're looking for is to enter this yellow area and push all the way through. With a closed candle above this area, it will really help set things in a really positive bullish motion to the upside for VeChain. So again, we haven't had an attempt on this yet. And um, so we are kind of stuck in this channel here between, as I said, 9.2 and 13.2 and um, with the occasional spike up to 15.2. My expectations are we'll continue to trade sideways here for VeChain in between this zone until we eventually have the sentiment in the market shift and change uh, into a more bullish scenario. Um, so again, guys, um, once we get in past this yellow area here, this is when things will really start heating up as we start to get some price discovery for VeChain, uh, heading up towards those much higher levels uh, of price discovery. So again, um, nothing really to worry about in my opinion. Uh, I'm not gonna be shaken out because I have this understanding as to where things are likely to go. And I'm hopefully uh, conveying this across to you guys to make you aware also of what that macro picture is currently looking like. Um, there's lots of fear in the space. There's lots of doubt and uncertainty and fear, right? Um, lots of FUD also surrounds this particular project. So it's important to understand the project inside and out and all of the fundamentals that they're also doing, but it's also important to also understand all of that technical data and where we are in a cycle. Are we actually in a bear market or are we just in a correction wave? Um, and obviously what is the likelihood of another spike and another all time high being set for VeChain? So in this particular case, I'm incredibly confident in everything that a VeChain is doing um, fundamentally, but also when we take a look at uh, you know, the technicals here, we know where we are in the overall bull market. We know where Bitcoin's currently sitting. We know where Bitcoin's dominance is. We know the stock to flow model. We know there's fear and greed index in there. We obviously know a lot more about uh, VeChain specifically in terms of its how many HUD ratio. We know the fear and greed index. We know the profitability. And we know that wave five is going to potentially be taking VeChain up to that dollar level. And with all of this stuff compiled together, it makes me hodl like I've never hodled before. Um, but Chris, anything else that you would like to add on the VeChain side? Yeah, like I said at the start of the video, Nick, the fundamentals are solid. It's not going anywhere. For, for me, this is just an opportunity to, to invest. And um, that's what I've been doing since yesterday. I've been back in the market and I've been in, uh, investing in projects that I think, you know, the fundamentals are so strong. Fantastic. And I say, you know, VeChain is one of those projects that you're so super confident on. There's uh, very few blockchains out there that have this level of adoption from a business side. Um, and these partnerships, these people who have adopted VeChain are absolutely massive, massive companies. These are companies that are not likely to just, uh, you know, change blockchain service provider on a whim. This is they've done a lot of research, they've done a lot of work to integrate or develop upon uh, VeChain's platform uh, that it's there for a long term uh, partnership rather than some short term 
deal. Um, and for these reasons, you're super confident on actually just sitting back and waiting and watching, right? Because five years from now, I would be super confident in seeing VeChain being a very, very significant player in this space. With that said and done, guys, if you found this useful and informative, uh, do go ahead and hit that like button. We both really do appreciate that. And of course, if you happen to be new to the channel and you'd like to stay up to date with the new cryptocurrencies, the hidden gems, the technical analysis and news, then do go ahead and subscribe. By subscribing, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything we do here. It is free. You'll stay well informed. So why not? And with that said, done and out of the way, we hope you have a fantastic day, guys. And we'll catch you in the next one. Yeah, take care. Um...